Okay, so this is part 10 of Good Omens. You said it was him, moaned Aziraphale, abs abstractedly picking the final lump of cream cake from his lapel. He licked his fingers clean. It was him, said Crowley. I mean, I should know, shouldn't I? Then someone else must be interfering. There isn't anyone else, there's just us, right, good and evil, one side or the other. He thumped the steering wheel. You'll be amazed at the kind of things they can do to you down there, he said. I imagine they're very similar to the sort of things they can do to one up there, said Aziraphale. Come off it, your lot to get ineffable mercy, said Crowley sour sourly. <laughs> yes, did you ever visit Gamora? Sure, said the demon. There was this great little tavern where you could get these terrific fermented date palm cocktails with nutmeg and crushed lemongrass. I meant afterwards. Oh. Azurafel said, something must have happened in the hospital. It couldn't have. It was full of our people. Whose people, said Azurafel coldly. My people, corrected Crowley. Well, not my people, you know. Satanist. He tried to say it dismissively. Apart from, of course, the fact that the world was an amazing, interesting place where they both wanted to enjoy for as long as possible, there were few things that the two of them agreed on. They did see eye to eye about some people, some of those people who, for one reason or another, were inclined to worship the Prince of Darkness. Crowley always found them embarrassing. You couldn't actually be rude to them, but you couldn't help feeling about them the same way that, say, a Vietnam veteran would feel about someone who wears combat gear to neighborhood watch meetings. Besides, they were always so depressingly enthusiastic. Take all that stuff with the inverted crosses and pentagrams and cockles. It mystified most demons. It wasn't the least bit necessary. All you needed to become a Satanist was an effort of will. You could be one all your life without ever knowing what a pentagram was, without ever seeing a dead cockerel other than as chicken morango. Besides, some of the old-style Satanists tended, in fact, to be quite nice people. They mouthed the words and went through the motions, just like the people they thought of as their opposite numbers, and then went home and lived lives of mild, uh, unassuming mediocrity for the rest of the week with never, never an unusual evil thought in their heads. And as for the rest of it, there were people who called themselves Satanists who made Crowley squirm. It wasn't just the things they did, it was the way they blamed it all on hell. They'd come up with some stomach-churning idea that no demon could have thought of in a thousand years. Some dark and mindless unpleasantness that only a fully functioning human brain could conceive. Then shout, the devil made me do it, and get the sympathy of the court when the whole point was that the devil hardly ever made anyone do anything. He didn't have to. That was what some fum humans found hard to understand. Hell wasn't a major reservoir of evil, any more than heaven, in Crowley's opinion, was a fountain of goodness. They were just sides in, a, in the great cosmic chess game, where you found the real McCoy, the real grace, and the real heart-stopping evil was right inside the human mind. Huh? Says Xerophil, Satanist. I don't see how they could have messed it up said Crowley. I mean, two babies. It's not exactly taxing, is it? He stopped. Through the mist of memory, he pictured a small nun who had struck him at the time as being remarkably loose-headed, even for a Satanist. And there had been someone else. Crowley vaguely called a pipe and a cardigan with a kind of zigzag pattern that went out of style in 1938. The man with expectant father written all over him. There must have been a third baby, he told Aziraphale. Not a lot to go on, said the angel. We know the child must be alive, said Crawley. So, how do we know? If it had turned up down there again, do you think I'd still be sitting here? Good point. So, all we've got to do is find it, said Crawley. Go through the hospital records. The Bentley's engine coughed into life, and the car leapt forward, forcing Azera fell back into the seat. And then what? And then what, he said. And then we find the child. And then what? The angel shut his eyes as the car crabbed around a corner. Don't know. Good grief. I suppose, get off the road, you clown. Your people wouldn't consider. And the scooter you rode in on, giving me asylum? I was going to ask the same thing. Watch out for that pedestrian. 
It's on the street. It knows the risks it's taking, said Crawley, easing the accelerating car between a parked car and a taxi and leaving a space which would have barely accepted even the best credit card. Watch the road, watch the road. Where is this hospital anyway? Somewhere south of Oxford. Aziraphale grabbed the dashboard. You can't do 90 miles an hour in central London. Crowley peered at the dial. Why not? He said. You'll get us all killed. Aziraphale hesitated. Inconveniently discorporated, he corrected lamely, relaxing a little. Anyway, you might kill other people. Crowley shrugged. The angel had never really come to grips with the 20th century and didn't realize that it is perfectly possible to do 90 miles an hour down Oxford Street. You just arranged matters so that no one was in the way. And since everyone knew that it was impossible to do 90 miles an hour down Oxford Street, no one noticed. At least cars were better than horses. The internal combustion engine had been a godios, a, a god se, a bless a, a windfall for Crowley. The only horses he could have been riding on business in the old days were big black jobs with eyes like flame and hooves that struck sparks. That was de riga for a, ge for a demon. Usually Crowley fell off. He wasn't much good with animals. Somewhere around Cheswick, Aziraphale scrambled vaguely in the scree of tapes in the glove compartment. What's a velvet underground? He said. You wouldn't like it, said Crowley. Oh, said the angel dismissively. Bebop. Do you know, Aziraphale, that probably if a million human beings were asked to describe modern music, they wouldn't use the term bebop, said Crowley. Ah, oh, this is more like it. Tikovowski, said Aziraphale, opening a case and slotting its cassette into the blow plunket. You won't enjoy it, said Cr sighed Crowley. It's been in the car for more than a fortnight. A heavy bass beat began to thump through the Bentley as it sped past Heathrow. Aziraphale's brow furrowed. I don't recognize this, he said. What is it? It's Tafoski's Another One Bites the Dust, said Crawley, closing his eyes as he went through Slough. To while away the time as they crossed the sleeping children's, they also listened to William Byrd's We Are the Champions and Beethoven's I Want to Break Free. Neither were, neither were as good as Val Williams' Fat Bottom Girls. It is said that the devil has all the best tunes. That is broadly true, but heaven has the best choreographers. The Oxfordshire plain stretched out to the west, with a scattering of lights to mark the slumbering villages where honest ye yeomen were settling down to sleep after a long day's editorial direction, financial consulting, or software engineering. Up here on the hill, a few glowworms were lighting up. The surveyor's theta light is one of the more direful symbols of the 20th century. Set up anywhere in open countryside, it says, there will come road widening, yeah, and 2,000 home escape estates in keeping with the essential character of the village. Executive developments will be manifested. But not even the most conscientious conscientious surveyor surveys at midnight and yet here the thing was tripod legs deep in the turf not many theo theodolites have a hazel twig strapped to the top either or crystal pendulums hanging from them and celtic ruins carved into the legs the soft breeze flapped the cloak of the slim figure who was adjusting the knobs of the thing it was quite a heavy cloak sensibly waterproof with a warm lining most books on witchcraft will tell you that witches work naked this is because most books on witchcraft are written by men. The young woman's name was Anathema Device. She was not astonishingly beautiful. All her features, considered individually, were extremely pretty, but the entirety of her face gave the impression that it had been put together hurriedly from stock without reference to any plan. Probably the most suitable word is attractive, although people who knew what it meant and could spell it right added vivacious, and although there was something very 50s about vivacious, so perhaps I wouldn't. Young women should not go alone on dark nights, even in Oxfordshire, but any prowling maniac would have had more than his work cut out if he had accosted anathema device. She was a witch, after all, and precisely because she was a witch, and therefore sensible, she put little faith in protective amulets and spells. She saved it all for a foot-long bread knife which she kept in her belt. She sighted through the glass and made another adjustment. She muttered under her breath. 
Surveyors often mutter under their breath. They mutter things like, soon have a relief road through here faster than you can say Jack Robinson, or there's three fifty. There's 3.5 meters, give or take, and that's whisker. This was an entirely different kind of muttering. Dark some night and Cheyenne mood, muttered anathema. East by south, by west, by southwest, west, southwest. Got you. She picked up a folded ordnance survey map and held it in the torchlight. Then she produced a transparent ruler and a pencil and carefully drew a line across the map. It intersected another pencil line. She smiled, not because anything was particular, particularly amusing, but because a tricky job had been well done. Then she collapsed the strange theolite strapped in. Then she collapsed the strange theolite strapped it into onto the back of a sit-up and bag black bicycle leaning against the hedge, made sure the book was in the basket, and wheeled everything out to the misty lane. It was a very ancient bike with a frame apparently made of drain pipes. It had been built long before the invention of the three-speed gear and possibly only just after the invention of the wheel. But it was nearly all downhill to the village. Hair streaming in the wind, cloak ballooning behind her like a sheet anchor, she let the two-wheeled juggernaut accelerate ponderously through the warm air. At least there wasn't any traffic at this time of night. 